keep us in touch, they're mostly free and they're taking the place of the SMS. Messenger apps are the most popular apps of them all, and if you don't have at least one on your smartphone, then, well, where have you been? When it comes to instant messaging apps, there are quite a few options on the market. And while some apps just let you chat, others let you do a whole lot more. You can share images, make video calls, or annoyingly ping someone until they respond to your message. And what's the charge? Well, it all just depends on your data plan. We are essentially beginning to see instant messaging apps replace SMS. And instant messaging is no longer just a thing for teens. According to an analysis by Informa, in 2012, over 19 billion messages were sent each day worldwide via an instant messaging app. This is opposed to the 17.6 billion messages sent via SMS. And they predict that these numbers will change. In 2014, they predict that only 21 billion messages will be sent via SMS, opposed to the projected 50 billion messages sent via instant messaging. Whoa, that's a lot of messages. But with so many apps on the market, which one do you choose? According to tech consultancy Ovum, WhatsApp is the world's third most popular social messaging service after Facebook Chat and Google Chat. WhatsApp, which is available on iPhone, Blackberry and Android, does what most instant messaging services do. Send messages, images, audio, video, etc. And how can we forget the very bizarre emoticons that often leave you wondering, why would I ever need that? But there is a downfall to WhatsApp because it's much like having a party where you don't have control over who's invited. If someone gets your number, they can easily start chatting to you and that makes it quite undesirable. But there are other options. WeChat is available on Apple and Android devices. The app was developed by Tencent Technology and it basically mixes social networking with instant messaging. The app is not just for the individual but for brands as well and they can use the app as a means of a promotional platform. The app is free but it remains to be seen if that will also apply to brands that will use it. The app approximately already has 300 million users worldwide. The instant messaging market is clearly one to be focusing on. In May, BlackBerry announced that they'll be offering BBM across all mobile platforms. Now, this will obviously increase competition in the instant messaging space. And let's be honest, BBM was one of BlackBerry's biggest selling points for years, so it will be interesting to see what this move will mean. I use Facebook, WhatsApp and BBM. I mostly use uh, BBM, but I also have WhatsApp for people to accommodate people that do not have Blackberries. Well, I've got a Blackberry, so I use BBM and WhatsApp mostly. I prefer SMSing. Why do you prefer SMSing? Because sometimes a network just delays everything. Um, I prefer instant messaging Why? because um, with BIS I can reply instantly. Or else with SMSs, if I don't have airtime, I can't reply. Instant messaging, SMS is very outdated. As with everything in life, there is a downside. You have to be able to convince your friends to download the apps to be able to communicate with them. The apps are rendered useless if you only have one person that also has the app. The other downfall is that when it comes to instant messaging, there's no real peace. If you get an SMS, the sender won't know whether you've read their message. And with most instant messaging apps, it lets the sender know whether you've got their message or not, giving no real chance to ignore messages that you don't feel like responding to. SMS isn't something that we can completely rule out just yet because it's still the norm for the average phone owner and a very big cash cow for our mobile networks. But with the rise in instant messaging apps, maybe our mobile networks might want to look at making data plans their new cash cow.